in total if I try to summarize so even here right like when I looked at this particular algorithm I can also view this algorithm as xt plus 1 as a function of uh, xt right some function of xt plus some weighted gradient some great like it's essentially central server even though if I look at this particular diagram here right so every every agent or every client makes multiple local updates so let's say every client makes just one local update then this problem is same as parameter server approach predator learning is same as parameter server approach where xt plus 1 is xt minus step size times the sum of all the gradients or the average of all the gradients and this is this is how the uh, xt plus 1 is updated right now because you are updating because i am updating this uh, multiple times i can still view this so instead of send, sending the gradient for one the, on the entire batch client would be sending uh, some i mean uh, basically an accumulated gradients to uh, to the central server right every client would be uh, because you are accumulating the gradient every time you are uh, performing the local updates so if i were to write xt j plus xt tau tau i as a function of xt something that we have already done here so this is nothing but it's essentially accumulating the gradients with certain weights and that information is being sent to the central server so the general update rule let me write this general update rule at the server side is that xt plus 1 let me also call it xt plus 1 0 because that is the value that is communicated to or that is uh, the parameter that is communicated to all the clients right so that 0 is what it indicates it essentially means that this is the as I said over here right like we have this xt10 this is nothing but xt so they really think of it as xt plus 1 at the server side we are calling it xt plus 1 0 so that uh, it's also the 0th 0th I mean without any update without any local update this is the value that is received at each client right so you can show that all the fed averaging algorithm can be written as a generalized update rule like this tau effective times summation i1 1 through m weights wi minus step size eta times some update direction dt i will tell you what dt is but this is what it looks like so this is this is more or less like if, if let's say every agent performs sing, just a single update then we know that xt plus 1 0 is xt 0 minus eta times the sum of the gradients okay so let's assume every agent performs just one local update okay so then what is the information that uh, that the central server is receiving so it would be doing xt plus 1 0 xt 0 minus eta times i 1 through n w i and you have the summation of basically weighted summation of gradients so g xt 0 on the data set of the first i agent right this is what it would be doing and if i look at this particular update rule and this particular update rule they are kind of similar in the sense that tau effective in this case turns out to be one okay so that is the effective number of uh, local updates everyone is performing just one local update so tau effective turns out to be one and dt turns out to be the gradient okay but what happens if let's say agent one runs tau one number of updates agent two runs tau two number of updates you would have certain expression for tau effective you would have certain expression for dt as well so dt need not be need not directly be the gradient but it may be the sum of the gradient and so on okay how do we say that let's say agent uh, agent 1 or agent i performs two local updates so in that case so assume agent i performs two local updates so that means it will have xt 1 
no i is going to be x t zero i minus step size times gradient okay so that is one update and the second update is x t two i is x t one i x t one i minus okay is this clear so i can write x t one in terms of x t not okay so let's write that so this is x t not i minus theta g x and then you have this additional term theta c2 and this would be x t okay is this clear so if i were to write x t plus 2 i not t plus sorry t comma 2 i t comma 2 i it is nothing but x t 0 i minus eta times summation let's say uh, j equal 1 through in this case it is just 2 so let's take j 1 through 0 to 1 by the okay is this clear so you can effectively think of this as your dt the information that is so essentially the sum basically the sum accumulation of gradients in each local update is what your dt i looks like okay because this is the information after two updates this is the information that is being communicated by the client to the cent central server right so this is the information that is being communicated you essentially this is what is being communicated so in a sense if i were to write this so this is xt tau sub i i is going to be xt 0 i minus step size eta times j equal 0 to tau i minus 1 g xt j i z okay and this is so this is after tower updates all right is this clear so if i ac accumulate all of this so this is just from the ith agent right so if i if i look at at the server side xt plus 1 0 at the server side xt plus 1 0 is essentially going to be summation pi i from 1 through n xt tau sub i okay with summation pi equal to 1 this is the server side update and if i look at it like this i 1 through m p sub i and i just write it in terms of xt 0 i which is by the way same which is same as xt 0 because for every client at the beginning of the communication round they would have received the same value so let me simply write this as xt 0 rather minus eta times summation j equal 0 through tau i minus 1 g x t j okay so i can this implies that i can write x t plus 1 0 as x t 0 minus summation 
i 1 through m p i or let's say plus and then you have minus that times in this particular term j equal to 0 to tau i minus 1 g x to j okay so if i compare this particular update with my general update rule like this so that means i am using tau effective to be equal to 1 w i same as p i and d t i is this accumulated gradient so fed averaging can be fit into this particular general up, general update rule it is clear right so so fed averaging can be thought of so so the reason why we came up with this general update rule is so because in fact there is this new europe's 2020 paper which proposed this algorithm called fed nova and they showed that there are other algorithms like fed prox fed average fed nova all of this can be represented at as a general update rule like this with different value of let's say tau effective with different value of dti with different value of wis so all of this uh, i mean wi can be a function of pi in this case they turned out to be exactly same as pi but depending on different algorithm as i said fed nova fed prox all of this can be represented like a family of these uh, federated learning algorithms can be represented using this general update rule and we are now going to look at fed nova and with primarily because of this uh, objective inconsistency problem and how fed nova tries to eliminate that is this clear so in vanilla uh, fed averaging so in vanilla fed averaging xt tau i now this is going to be xt0 which is same which is same across all clients minus eta times your accumulated gradient which turns out to be j is equal to 0 to tau i minus 1 gradient okay let me let, i'm just like for the sake of uh, simplicity simplicity i'm just dropping off eta j but that's clear that it's the gradient computed on that mini batch okay so this is your uh, accumulated gradient and let's call this delta t uh, okay this is your accumulated gradient delta t i now instead we define a normalized uh, we define a normalized gradient which looks something like this delta ti or dti is what you have here so the dti vector that we are going to be sending right so this is going to be of the form j equal 0 to tau i minus 1 so it is defined through another vector uh, let me first write this aj i tau i minus 1. So instead of the idea is instead of sending this accumulated gradient g summation of g right that is the accumulated gradient. So the fed averaging was sending this accumulated gradient summation g and we saw that there is, there is objective inconsistency issue with the fed averaging. So instead of sending this uh, this accumulated gradient which is uh, summation of g we are instead sending up uh, a weighted basically a weighted gradient right and here this vector a so a has these components in a, uh, let's call it ai basically ai0 ai1 ai2 so essentially we are diff, like we are weighting each gradient in each batch right the gradient g in each batch through this a is a non negative vector and 
and you can essentially if it's a non negative vector you can write this as g t in the vector form this is one norm essentially some I mean g t i a i is, is nothing but uh, it is essentially the this particular term over here normalized by the value I mean basically one norm of a why one norm of a because a is anyway a non negative uh, non negative vector. So, essentially absolute value of a j is same a j i is same as a j i since it is a non negative vector. So, in basically in the jth round uh, in the jth local update. So, what we are saying is instead of just like equally weighting all the gradients which what which is what fed averaging does we are going to be weighting the gradient in each in the jth round using this uh, uh, this uh, this quantity a j a j i ok and we will see uh, how this has a role to play in the context of uh, object uh, objective inconsistency. So, when you have fed averaging as as your algorithm what is a ok let us so before we go there let us let us also let us see what happens if we start sending this normalized gradient. So, if we if we instead if the agents share normalized gradient like this or if the let us say client basically yeah if the agents here this normalized gradient we can so show that on the server side the update rule the general update rule looks like x t 0 plus summation i 1 through n. So, this is essentially the DTI that each client is sending. So, it would be minus uh, w plus called w i times minus eta times g t i. So, is everyone following this? Is everyone following this? So, essentially this is the general update rule right. This is the general update rule. So, earlier d like in, in case of the vanilla fed averaging d t i is nothing but the accumulated gradient. Now, we are saying that we are not going to be like clients are not going to be sending accumulated gradient. They are going to be sending uh, some kind of uh, weighted gradient or normalized gradient right. And so, d t i turns out to be I mean since this is what the d, this is what the clients are going to be uh, sending. So, this is this is how the update for the sent like the server update would look like at the end of uh, tth communication round this is how the update would look like is this clear. So, if if I were to use fed averaging what what should be the a that I should be working with. So, in fed averaging what is the uh, what do we send sum of gradients right. In fed averaging we send sum of gradients. So, if you want just the sum of gradients to be sent out you should choose a, a, is, a is to be 1 all a is to be 1 right. If all a's are 1 then what is the one norm of this particular vector? How many elements are there in in this vector a i? Tau i number of vectors right. So, the one norm is simply tau i. So, let us see what happens. So, this is so in case of vanilla fed averaging a i is a vector of 1s right. There are tau i number of 1s uh, here. So, norm the one norm of a i is essentially tau i ok. G t i is nothing but So, what is uh, g t i? It is a gradient vector of gradients. So, what would be g t i times a i? It is just the accumulated gradient right. g t i times a i would be accumulated gradients and the tau effective would be. So, essentially what would you get? There is a yes. So, there is a tau in the denominator. So, what would what would end up happening ok. So, let us let us try and fit uh, make sense of this. So, this part is clear to everyone 
So, Fed average like for Fed averaging you have x t plus 1 0 is x t 0 plus summation w i 1 through m w i minus eta times accumulated gradient j 0 through uh, tau i minus 1 g of psi p j divided by tau i ok. And we know this is what uh, for fed averaging this is this is the uh, this is the set server update rule this is what the server update lo rule looks like. So, if I choose p i to be w i times tau i ok or rather if let us say if w i is chosen to be p i times tau i. So, then this tau and tau i would cancel it cancel each other out and what you would be left with is the fed averaging. So, in fed averaging if you were to use the same update rule. So, w i is chosen to be p i times tau i and this vector a turns out to be uh, just vector of ones. So, that is when you will recover the fed average. So, from the general from the generalized gradient uh, or the normalized gradient rather you would recover the fed averaging if you uh, use vector of a's to be ones and w i to be p i times tau i. Is this clear? Okay. So, that is uh, or I mean other way. So, essentially there is one more constraint we want w i's to be also equal to 1 right that is one more constraint. So, in that case we rather normalize this. So, this is instead of choosing w i to be this we choose w i to be p i tau i this i prime 1 through m p i prime tau i prime. So, that this this basically adds up to 1 and then you choose tau effective to be summation i equal 1 through m p i tau i. If I choose this to be my tau effective this to be my w and a to be a i to be essentially vector of 1. So, essentially this is equal to tau i then you essentially recover fed averaging. Why? Because if I look at this general update rule here if you choose w i to be summation p i p i tau i divided by the normalized sum. So, you have to cancel the normalized sum right. So, you have to choose tau effective to be that normalized sum that you are that sum that you can see you want to cancel this out. w i is chosen to be p i times tau i because we want this to look like uh, this particular fed averaging thing right. Is this clear? So, in fed averaging so just to summarize in fed averaging a sub i is chosen to be a vector of all ones. So, there are tau i such an elements w i is chosen to be p i tau i divided by i prime 1 through n p i tau i and tau effect or p i prime tau i prime and tau effective is chosen to be summation i 1 through n p i tau i. So, if we use all these three together when you send the generalized gradient which is generalized gradient by definition is g uh, p i p i divided by norm of a then you would recover the fed averaging algorithm. So, in fed NOVA algorithm So, this is this is your fed averaging algorithm. So, in the fed nova algorithm which is a significant improvement over fed averaging. So, in fed nova what what is done is client i uh, normalizes the total accumulated gradient. So, in fed, fed averaging client i simply sends the total accumulated gradient in fed averaging it normalizes the total accumulated uh, accumulated update or the which is delta t i by the number of updates number of local updates tau i. So, 
So essentially your negative theta dt i that looks like uh, so you want this to be equal to delta t i divided by tau i. This is what we want this to look like. Okay. So then server is going to up get the uh, so on the server side the total update is going to be summation i1 through m uh, you have p i delta t i divided by tau i and it multiplies multiplies by tau effective which is which turns out to be summation i p i tau i essentially this is the or this is what your red nova algorithms look like which is x t 0 plus tau effective times i 1 through m p i delta t i divided by tau i ok and you can show that this is this is uh, compared to fed averaging fed nova is actually a much improved version of uh, fed averaging so in this case I mean if we want this so the aggregation weights wi simply turn out to be pi right because there is one over tau i here instead of using this aggregation weight in the which is which looks something like this wi simply equal to pi and then you would you would essentially end up getting this particular thing over okay all right so this is about the fed nova algorithm and again you can as I said you can view the fed nova fed averaging all of these algorithms as the general uh, using this general update rule you just have to work with the appropriate choices of uh, your uh, tau effective wi and dti ok. The last point uh, or last thing that I wanted to cover in uh, in the context of federated learning is fairness. Essentially how do we evaluate fairness uh, in federated learning. So, I will just be briefly talk about uh, measures of fairness and uh, so essentially measures of fairness in federated learning. So, so among the popular measures one is the variance of the function itself. So, let us say the client i. So, uh, what first of all what do you mean by fairness? So, fairness essentially uh, evaluates the overall performance ag against the performance of the individual clients right. So, how different uh, like how or how uniform the distribution is is essentially what we are trying to see is it fair to every client or not fair to every client and so on. So, one simple approach is that you just look at the variance and the variance is nothing but you look at the variance of the function f1 x their k clients and this is simply measured as 1 over k summation i equal 1 through capital K uh, f i of x minus you just subtract the mean of uh, i prime 1 through capital K f i prime ok. So, it is a simple variance so, that is one way to estimate uh, the fairness like is everyone's objective is like essentially fair every participating client's objective. Second is uh, entropy. So, an entropy. So, what is the what is the definite like how do what is the uh, definition of entropy? Uh, negative p log p kind of thing right. So, how do we get the probability distribution here? So, it again we are measuring the fairness in the functions itself. So, what you can do is i 1 through k you can define something like this summation you can try to i prime 1 through k f i prime of x and then the log of the same quantity right. That is the entropy measure. The third is a uh, something called uh, Jan's fairness index. Ok. 
okay and it's usually measured as let me get the formula right This is a uh, Jan's fairness or rather Fi square of x, but this is Jan's fairness index. So all these are different ways uh, ways to measure fairness in federated learning. So I mean, if you have like fairness in federated learning, then you would then you would as I mean as you can imagine, if the objective functions are let's say roughly similar across different clients, then the error convergence is much better, right? Then if you have more heterogeneity in or let's say uh, non fairness in in federated learning so these are different ways through which you can uh, measure fairness in federated learning there are other topics like robustness uh, and uh, uh, i mean some more advanced topics i would say uh, so there is something called q fair federated learning and so there are several variants of federated learning which further go into uh, devising algorithms which are essentially fair and so on so we won't give uh, in the interest of this course and largely keeping it around distributed optimization and particularly around optimization. So we wouldn't go too deep into it and this pretty much concludes uh, all the contents that I wanted to cover in this particular course.